Hola, buenos dias. Hi everyone, my name is Apurva. I have come here to talk about my research on API security that I have worked for the past one year. So let me walk you through it. So the talk is titled called API Async Dast, where asynchronous uh, security meets the discovery of the APIs. Uh, so I'll just begin the slides from the basic to be, uh, basic, so all of you can understand from the beginner to the intermediary level. So beginning from that, so what is an API or an application for a programming interface, right? Like you have applications, phones uh, uh, with you and the system, how do they communicate with each other with the help of protocols, methods, and through the help of these APIs in a matter of seconds, how the messages go from one person to other with the help of these APIs. So something as basic as this. So. The APIs uh, communicate through a client and a server, or multiple servers from phone to cloud and to laptop to multiple messages. So something as basic as this, and how can we, how, I'd like to walk you through how we found an issue with this and how, uh, what is our research based upon. So I told you about the APIs, right? So. Since we as hackers, right, we also love to find issues and uh, find vulnerabilities. But as security engineers of our companies, we also want to find, protect our uh, ecosystem and our uh, uh, servers as much as possible. So in the past few years, what we have seen is from 2020, 2021 to 2022, a lot of data breaches are happened through lack of securing of these APIs. Somewhere in the way, some uh, API gets uh, publicly disclosed due to uh, lack of authentication or authorization, and the entire data is breached and will lead to uh, advanced attacks. Due to this, uh, we did a, me and my team, we did a bunch of research uh, and we see that uh, a lot of these days, like the developers, right, uh, they uh, ship the products very fast. Like uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, a lot of endpoints and the features are shipped very fast. And we do not have uh, uh, closure on how these APIs, how fast they ship and how... Uh, they are being sent, and we uh, we cannot uh, as pen testers we sorry yeah so as pen testers we cannot uh, we only can as a minimum number of uh, security engineers we can uh, pen test only few APIs in a day or in a month uh, f uh, five of the security engineers. But if you have to scale rapidly, what would you do if there are about ten thousand APIs or hundred thousand APIs? How would you scale and how would you keep your system secure? So uh, this is what one of the problems we found. And uh, after doing research, we found 94% uh, of the companies are attacked and data breaches happens through over the uh, lack of API security. And, uh, and during our research, we spoke to a bunch of developers as well, like uh, uh, are they keeping track of how the APIs are, how are they developing, and do they have any inventory of the APIs they have? But uh, they do not. They do have Postman collections and a set of APIs, but they do not keep a track of all the APIs, the deprecated version, different versioning, our, uh, zombie APIs, third-party integrations, they do not have context on all over them because uh, the things keep changing in a very rapid, fast-moving environment. So in, uh, as a day-to-day -day cycle as a security engineer who uh, does a lot of pen testing, making sure the app is very secure, we faced a bunch of problem statement. That is a lack of up-to-date inventory within the APIs. So how do we do that? There is no like single source of truth what, uh, how many APIs are there and how are they up to date. And also, like, uh, if you're working in a part of an app, like, you do know there are a lot of release cycles. There are release managements. And uh, things are shipped very fast. But uh, there is a lack of uh, communication gaps between the developers and the security engineers. And we are not able to uh, secure all the APIs that goes into the protection, uh, production environment in a pub, uh, uh, which goes to public. So there were some uh, uh, gaps, and also there was a lack of uh, visibility between the third-party APIs. Like we do not know uh, in our app how many third-party agents are there, what sort of data are we sending to them, is there any PII data that we are sharing with them. 
So that was one of the concern as well, the problem statement. And lack of visibility on PII data, that is personally identifiable data. How many of these outbound connections are we sending through as uh, phone numbers, our um, PAN numbers, or any uh, credit card details, anything as such? We, do not we did not have context on that. And any existing uh, API contract changes, like any parameter changes, a new parameter introduced with a sensitive uh, input field. We did not have context on all that. And also, like, uh, one of the last part was, like, uh, during the security uh, review, the intensive, uh, even though we do all the security review, but once the security review is done, uh, continuously doing the security review, the code reviews, and the DAS was a bit hard to manage since the app and the company keeps uh, scaling at a rapid pace. So because of this, like I said, once the company, like in a startup, a company is based and the app is uh, made, you will have initially as a 10 microservices, and each of these 10 microservices would have like 10 different APIs. So there would be like uh, 100,000 requests per day. But what if the app scales and there are 100 microservices? How would you try to protect them to protect those APIs. So there would be 100 million uh, requests per day per month. How would you try to secure them? And for companies such as uh, Facebook, Meta, and uh, other Microsoft, there would be a lot of requests. And how would you try to protect all the APIs in your ecosystem? So that was the problem we were facing, how to scale in a rapidly growing environment. So now, uh, as a part of our research, we, had, we found the problem. That is, uh, we are lacking a lot of visibility, and uh, we knew all the gaps which we were facing. But uh, for all the problems, we were not sure where to begin the answer. That is the, pro uh, that is the start. So uh, can any of you here tell me, like, uh, where do the APIs uh, are stored in the code base? Any of you can tell me if it is possible, like uh, where the APIs are in the code base. So that's okay. But the, the, in a simple terms, like in a very basic or uh, rudimentary level, we can understand the APIs. For example, in the simple code base where I want to retrieve my details, I'm sending a GET request, and I want to retrieve my details. So uh, the co connection is happening from the server to the back end where I'm retrieving the details. So in order to capture those API requests, I need to, uh, there is a network connection which is linked. But to capture that, if it was a desktop application as a normal application, it is very easy to capture those uh, using the, with the help of Wireshark tool. Uh, using a network sulfur, we can uh, capture all the data and analyze those data packets. But uh, what would you do in nowadays, all the digital companies are using uh, cloud computing systems. How would you capture the traffic over there? What would you do? Uh, in such cases, like if there is a lot of, like AWS, uh, the leading cloud computing services like AWS Azure, you cannot uh, sniff those traffic. In such case, what do, what, do, uh, what do we do? That was one of the questions we had. How do we get the, uh, how do we get the traffic and analyze those, monitor and analyze the traffic? And one more uh, scenario what we considered was making with the help of Postman. But uh, it is very hard to update the postman and manually update it every day. And another alternative was through checking through the logs, going over the logs, like such as Datadog or uh, uh, CloudWatch logs. But uh, when we went through them, they were not very accurate and up to date. And we were not able to get the full coverage visibility of all the APIs in our ecosystem. So in, we were uh, filled with a lot of confusion, and we were not sure what to do. So that, uh, that time comes the uh, first step into our uh, thing was uh, mirroring, simple logic as mirroring. That is AWS traffic mirroring. AWS released a feature called AWS Traffic Mirroring, which helps us to get real-time traffic uh, replication and real-time data, where uh, we can get uh, we can duplicate the data from a source to the destination with the help of AWS Traffic Mirroring. It is very easy, and the documentation for it are pretty straightforward. 
So it involves about uh, four components, the AWS traffic mirroring. For example, let's take a very simple example, such as uh, source target as A and destination target as B. You want to copy the target from A to B and replicate it. The same what is in A, you want to do commit, uh, uh, replicate the same thing as in B, that is mirroring the target. So what you have to do in between, I would have to add a filter, that is the uh, traffic mirroring filter. So simple fundamental, uh, so the simple fundamental communication between uh, two uh, APIs, what happens is through a network connection. So for the filters, we will have to add a network interface card in the, uh, uh, in the AWS. Network interface card and an ENI. So once the source is established and the destination uh, is set up through an EC2 machine, add a filter and add a bunch of rules, like the where to target the ENI and the network interface card, and a session is established. Using the session, whatever the uh, whatever the uh, traffic you are getting in source A will be directly replicated over source B, and you can manage the whole thing. So you are getting the entire A to Z from source A to source uh, B. So that is how the traffic mirror, AWS traffic mirroring works. And uh, if you read the documentation part, it is pretty straightforward. So this is the what the architecture diagram given by AWS for uh, traffic mirroring. So um, we have a mirroring target and the source. In between, we add a filter, and we are able to get the entire uh, traffic from A to B. So uh, in our research, we have three co core components. First uh, core component was AWS traffic mirroring. That is, uh, I just uh, went through it. And the next comes the testing engine. This is an in-house built testing engine uh, where we are. Uh, we have written a custom testing engine and an automation part. Uh, let me walk you through it, how it happens. So we get a lot of data from the traffic mirroring. For example, it, it is running at an RPS of very high and uh, 100 to 1,000 requests per day. So we have a lot of junk data as well. And with these traffic mirroring paths, we get a lot of endpoints and uh, traces as well. Uh, that is, the traces and the endpoints is converted into a schema. This schema is stored in the testing engine as the source of truth. And every day, the number of hits happen to an API that is, uh, that is compared with the original schema, and we track it, what is the difference. If there is a new endpoint in the API, if there are new parameters present in the APIs, as soon as uh, we find any new endpoint, it is directly sent over to the burp. So manually, what we do as pen testers, like uh, we get a bunch of APIs, we use Postman, and we send it to the burp. There's a lot of manual work involved. So if there are like 100,000 APIs, how would you do that? That would not be scalable, or it is not possible. And it's a lot of work. So it, with our testing engine, in-house testing engine, which has an ingester as well, so it processes the traffic that comes from the AWS traffic mirroring, and it directly goes to the testing engine, where it checks with the schema. And every time a new endpoint or a parameter is like we are alerted, it goes directly into the burp, and where the active scanning begins. So these are the main three components of our tool or our research, you can say. So uh, this is the uh, actual architecture diagram and the logic behind the entire thing. Uh, again, the first part is the traffic mirroring service, the AWS traffic mirroring. And through it, we get a bunch of traces. That is the endpoint. Uh, we have a custom-built in-house custom-built API. And every time the traffic goes through the API, uh, we have a webhook involved. In the webhook, it passes any new endpoint is that we are alerted. Oh, example, there's a new request, hi. So we get alerted because uh, we have seen in the, a lot of developers like to push things at the end moment or in the, during the weekends or at the end. So it is very hard to keep track of things. So we have an alerting machine. Whenever there is a new endpoint, we get alerted with the help of testing engine. And as soon as the, Endpoint or parameter has changed, we get alerted over Slack. 
like hi, there's an endpoint, new endpoint. And as soon as the uh, traffic moves from the testing engine, it goes directly to burp, which is set up on an EC2 mes machine, and the, directly the active scanning begin. We, in all this entire process, right, we also have another process set up that is for on-demand scan. So we see in a lot of security-based companies, right, we need to have a lot of for compliance requirements. We need to have a set of uh, reports ready for a certain set of services like PCI requirements and other requirements which comes with the uh, compliance. So for such scenarios as well, we have on-demand scan. So every, uh, the scan can be set to, like, uh, to be run through every day, every month, or every week, or once in a quarter, uh, twice in a year, or something like that. So it will be very helpful for us. So this is the entire logic what we have go gone behind it. Uh, uh, yeah, next part is, like I said, uh, once the traffic mirroring is done and uh, is uh, uh, before going through our testing engine, there is an open API spec that is generated. So th this is how it looks, and this this thing is generated over a period of time. The open API spec. So now we are able to get all the APIs in our uh, ecosystem, that is the host and all the parameters coming up to them. So we can consider this a open API spec within over time as a source of truth. And uh, we can compare it with a new spec generated, and we can find any delta that is happening in between. So like I said, every time there is a new alert that comes or an endpoint that is come, uh, that is uh, appears or anything is pushed onto the public, like the developer wants to push a new endpoint on a Sunday and we are very busy, we get an alert such as this, like the type will be written as new endpoint with the detected timing and the UUID of the request, along with the domain and the new path. Oh, this uh, API went live at the correct time. We also have a different type of alert where uh, uh, we also get something such as uh, a new sensitive parameter went live. For example, some uh, new uh, PII field has gone live, like a uh, phone number field has gone live. We just get an alert for that as well, telling the path and the domain with, along with the time and the UUID. So this was the entire process, just like let me walk you through it. This is the automation, what we have done. So we have an ecosystem with our API ecosystem where we have a hundred thousands of APIs calling internal, external, third party, sensitive APIs, zombie APIs, deprecated version and differ uh, differencing APIs. So all of this collected is in, is in the form of an inventory that is in the form of a directory. As soon as the inventory, we have a source of truth that is the inventory. Uh, we are alerted in case of any new endpoint comes up or any new parameter comes up. As soon as the endpoint or the parameter comes up, it is directly sent over to the burp to begin the active scanning. Uh, along with active scanning, we do have a we do make use of a burp suit uh, external. Uh, integration called bscripts to run custom uh, test uh, for OASP API uh, top 10 and also for test cases such as BOLA, IDOR, etc. And the scans are run every day in a continuous way and once the scan is completed, we do get the report. So this is the flow diagram of our entire process. So we all know how the burp testing would look like, so something like this. And this happens in an automated scanning way. So we, if we want to generate a report for compliance purpose and on time or something like that, the issues are, uh, the issues are uh, over there and we will just export it as a CSV uh, file and we'll send it over. So in case like any of these issues are valid, right? We do know using burp, we have a lot of false positives generated. We are not sure what are there. So in case if it is a true positive, for example, for a very high issue such as SQL injection or LFI or SSRF, uh, right away the as soon as the burp is run, we have set a high uh, for issues with severity greater than medium and high issues. Directly, uh, the burp will send, uh, we have added an automation to create a JIRA ticket. As soon as the issue is created, the developer is made aware of the issue and uh, he can start working on the fix. So this is how we have made the entire process from uh, 
uh, where the code is pushed on, pushed into uh, into the uh, database and made public. Uh, we are aware of it and we have made the entire testing process very seamless from if there are any issues with continuous testing, we have made it very seamless, very easy to use. Uh, and if there are any issues, it will be directly creating a JIRA ticket and the if anything is there, the developer can st uh, directly start working on the fix, making our life easier as pen testers. So the conclusion of this talk is, no, why did we even pick this research? So on a day-to-day -day basis, scaling the entire thing was so difficult. Like every day, a new 10 new APIs would come, 50 new APIs would come, which would be very hard to uh, understand, make the whole cy uh, life cycle and making sure that every code is very protected along with uh, DAST and uh, code reviews. So this is a made it a very automated process. And the second part, uh, like I said, the coverage and the visibility is uh, made very high. Uh, due to this process, we have entire coverage of our uh, backend and the microservices. So we don't have to manually go look through the code and understand the endpoints present. We can directly get all the endpoints and the visibility. And third major thing, uh, cause of this research was uh, continuous security assessment. Due to this, we can uh, automate the whole thing and make sure continuous testing is done against those APIs and no bad attackers or any uh, external agents can extract data through our endpoints. So what is the future of uh, our research? What are we trying to do? So the main thing of this uh, research is, uh, like I said, adapt. Uh, one of the thing we, uh, issues we faced was adaptability. So since there are hundreds and uh, millions of requests coming in, uh, there are two, three different uh, environments in an app, like staging, production, and dev. So there are uh, m millions and billions of requests. And handling all these requests uh, between uh, different environments is a bit hard. And uh, also the entire process needs to support that huge amount of traffic of data. Uh, due to this, we are working on the adaptability, adaptability and uh, adaptability between different environments and making sure everything is as seamless as possible and fine tuning. As we all know, we run DAST and everything, right? And burp, right? Uh, there's a lot of false positives involved. Uh, these uh, burp suit uh, gives a lot of false positive issues. So fine tuning the entire uh, DAST process and the scripts, Bri scripts, integration script to making sure they are very true positive and apt and does not give a, make a lot of noise. So that is one of the things we are working on. And the third and the main most thing is uh, getting outbound TLS and SSL traffic. So uh, the traffic which are, we are getting through AWS traffic mirroring is uh, inside our VPC, it is not encrypted. As soon as it moves to the API gateway, the entire uh, traffic is encrypted, which would be very hard to read and understand. Once we, f uh, we are trying to figure out a workaround through it, if we do that, due to this, we can, uh, in the app, we can find out all the third party integrations that are happening. So we don't have to manually check anything, which would make, very e uh, which would make things very easier. So, and also one of the uh, things we are working on is trying to make our research in the form of a tool. So all of you here can also uh, use our tool and make uh, the best use of it. So I would like to credit my colleague uh, who couldn't be here, Abhishek Jaiswal, who has worked, on with, worked with me on this research for a, quite a long time. And I would also like to thank uh, CRED security team for uh, making me for uh, asking us to work on any research which we want. And also, like during our research, we tested a bunch of uh, API security solutions out there, and we liked the open, Metlo open source version a lot, which was very uh, the best. So a huge shout out to them. And yeah, that's all, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Alguna pregunta? Any question in English? Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
First of all, thank you so much thank you. for this presentation. Um, I would like to ask something with regards to the future, yes. so the fine-tuning part. Yeah. Do you think that it would be possible someday in the future to have uh, this kind of tool integrated into the CI-CD pipeline, for example, so that nothing vulnerable could be uh, deployed? Okay or something like that? Yeah, that is the future goal what we are looking at, the North Star. So we open source it and we are trying to, uh, so we integrate it to the CICD pipeline. Mm -hmm. So everything is very seamless. That is what we are trying to work upon. But you you know, like using a lot of scanners, right? Like uh, Burp and Detectify and every other open source scanners, there's a lot of noise. First, we are trying to reduce the noise. As soon as uh, it is up to an eight, the detection rate, the issue detection rate is of uh, very 80 to 90 percent higher. That is what we are working on to uh, add, directly add this tool in the CI/CD pipeline. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Another question? Hi, thank Hi. you for your talk. Uh, you said that you were mirroring the environment. Is it yeah. the production environment or the pre-production environment? No, first we started with the pre-production, that is the staging environment, because we have tested this entire thing as the staging environment. In our production servers, there's a lot of traffic. Sometimes it comes up to uh, one billion requests per month, which is very hard. Uh, which is very difficult and also using AWS traffic mirroring you are replicating the data and storing it in a DP which would also increase the AWS cost. So we are going stage by stage but we are in the works of uh, using it in the production environment. This is in the works mm -hmm. but we have tested it through the staging pre-production environment and it worked very seamlessly. Okay, thank you. Thank and you. What advantages about doing it mirroring all the traffic instead of having just a proxy uh, in line with, with the system? Uh, AWS does not allow proxying the system, so we need to make use of a traffic mirroring feature that is allowed by them to uh, replicate the traffic, what is happening. So that is how it works. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Gracias.